But as Christ and I went on our journey night after night, what I learned, he talked about his blood in hell, that if they had received him, no matter what they did, he would have washed them clean by his power and his blood. Because when he was crucified, that's why he did that, to save us from eternal damnation. If we would believe he was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then I learned something. As I'm walking with him and talking with him, I learned out of the book of Galatians, there's 17 works of our flesh. He took and he showed me a valley full of murderers. They had died on the earth. They were, their main thing they did in their life was to murder people. They had to be millions. And I began to look at a vast number. They were skeletons chained together. And they were burning and screaming. And then he said, I want to show you people that have hate in their heart. He showed me a valley without number. And these were also uh, chained together, burning and screaming. And demons walking through torment them. And some of them were literally pulled apart and taken all over hell and they were screaming. Each part of the body would scream. And I thought, oh my God, what a torment. And then um, he showed me like a people in the cult, like I told you, in, in the center of hell. He showed me the murderers, he showed me the haters, he showed me the ones that are prejudiced. This is a subject that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but God does not see color. Listen, love knows no color of our skin. And what you have to do is love you one another as Christ loved us. And we have to watch what we say because that brings roots of bitterness and hatefulness. And in hell, there was a section for people like that. There was a section in hell for the hypocrites. They were in the heart of hell. It was a heart of hell as big as a football field. And around the base of it was sewers from the earth that run around it. The stink was beyond your belief. And in the midst of this is rats. Rats big as uh, 70 pounds. They're real, they're not a spirit. And they bite on these souls. The torment of things you just don't understand because it's hidden from you. But as you look at this and as you listen, and you understand the knowledge that's been hid from us, revelation knowledge. God wants us to see and know these things so we do not go to hell. God wants us to have a, a, a knowledge and wisdom of what's down in the middle of the earth. And when God begins to show somebody these things, it's earth shaking. On this journey in hell, I was one night walking with the Lord. And he said, I'm going to show you the fun center in hell. It's like a Roman theater, and the devil is setting up in his throne at the top of this big rock place. It was all rocks. And it was similar to a Roman theater where they used to torment the men, you know, and kill them, and let the lions come out and eat them. Well, here was a Satan on his throne. He had a book out on a, on a big... Uh, he was in a chair, and the book was on a, like a throne, okay? And there was names on that. And then the demons had went through hell and picked out certain people and had them lined up. All these skeletons, you know, and they were men and women, top of their voices, and they were crying. And the Lord said, this is horrible, but I want you to tell the people of the world about it. The devil would throw his head back and roar and laugh. And you could see him, he was solid looking. He had big horns, his face was red looking. He was very, very demonic looking. He looked kind of like the old movie, The Legend what he looked like had the hoof feet and everything and he's sitting up there and he's huge he's so big and they bring these uh, people before the throne the first I think it was a man and all around the edges there's these demons with spears and growling and laughing and they brought this uh, person up front of the throne and uh, he opens up this book and he said well I see uh, when you were on the earth in uh, the beginning you used to preach the gospel. That's what he called it, the gospel. And according to my report, you got many people to turn and their way stopped 
he watched how he worded it, okay? He said, you got many people to turn from uh, darkness into light. That's what he said. And he said, I see here a list of the things you did. So what we did, the devil looked at him and said, we sent out a crew of demons to stop you. He said, we sent them out to come and to stop your works because you were doing too much um, in the light. That's how he would word it. And he said, uh, we deceived you, and then I set a trap for you and killed you when you were in deep sin, and that's why you're in hell. That's what he told him. He said, I didn't give you a chance to repent. He said, God, he did say this, he said, God has grace and mercy, why do not? He said, I have no mercy. And he said, all those that were in line with you, I did the same to them. They used to be believers on the earth. And I thought about it, and I looked at the Lord, I said, Lord, he is truly a deceiver and a master, art a master. He said, yes, child, it says all through the book, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he deceived these people that you see in line, and right at their vulnerable state, he killed them, because they, they uh, were in traps, they were in cages, ensnared by him, I should say, ensnared by him. And the devil began to laugh, and he said, uh, Tormentors, come and get him, get her, him. What happened, she, this corpse was standing there, and they would each one would come and pull an arm off, pull the head off, the legs off, and, and the tarso they had. So they would take that body where they pulled it apart, and they would scream. Every piece of that body would scream for the other part. And they would take it all over hell and bury it, laughing. After all this is done, then they scream so loud, their screams are heard. And I don't know by who, but he said, God has mercy and sends power and puts them all back together again. Now that's horrible. That's horrible. And you think about what a, what a wicked, wicked devil is, and you better get mad at him. You better get really angry in the name of Jesus. You better stand up, fight for your family because he's real. It's an unseen force, and that's why I preach that's why I pray and that's why I travel, to tell people, you know, it, it, to wake up, you know, time is short. The demons in hell, they can take on many shapes, okay? You can see one like three inches high would uh, swirl around the skulls of people. Say, we deceived you, we deceived you, you could have had Jesus, but we deceived you. With the lust of your flesh, more than God's commandments and they would curse and blaspheme God. Now these in hell I've seen like animal creatures, okay? It may have been an illusion, okay? Because they are illusions in hell. The devil brings illusions, a false paradise and everything. But I've seen these with corpses on the backs of them also, and burning and screaming, even the horses was on fire. I was walking with the Lord on the valley of the shadow of death and it was crawling in the muck beside me. It was huge, like a big bear. But I never saw its face, I just saw its backside. But I did see them in hell that looked like humongous bears and I think they've taken on the forms of the animals, you know, to bring more torture to people and more... Uh, I really believe that as I'm even talking to you, I really believe that they have done this to bring heartache, more heartache to the people, like seeing a horse or a, a bear or something like that. Because they're all demons, they're devils. We go to the left arm of hell. And then the left arm of hell is a snake as big as a train, a locomotive, and it's real, it's not a spirit. And he said, look at this child. And when I did, this snake would send fire out of its mouth and would come like three feet from us and go back. And the head of this snake was big as a locomotive train. That's how big. And he said, this snake will hit the earth when the world, the church is caught away. That's exactly what he said. So I learned that all of these vicious creatures, heartless, have no mercy. They have no pity. The people that go to hell, they, they, they know they're doomed for the lake of fire. And they take out all their vengeance on one soul. A couple of times when God was, Jesus was showing me through the pits and the fires and the hypocrites in the heart of hell, and I went in there, I was so afraid. 
And a couple of times I didn't see the Lord. He allowed it. He allowed me to suffer in hell too, in the jaws of hell. And let me really feel like for a few minutes what it was like to be lost in hell. It's horrible. And with no relief or no help. And he did that because of the revelation of hell like John the Red or Revelator had. And when you're chosen of the Lord to do certain things, he wants you to experience certain things. So when I was there with the Lord, I began to understand the living word of God. And I also saw, I talk about in the book of Revelations, the beast, and in the book of Daniel, with the seven heads. I saw that beast in the, in the middle of hell roaming and, and growling. The neck of that beast was about maybe, I don't know, real, real long. I didn't have, it was maybe five feet each neck. And on their heads was a crown. And their teeth, they were real. It was not a spirit. Their teeth are like razor blades. They go backwards and forwards. And he said these are seven major kingdoms against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he told me. He said, child, these are seven major doctrines that do not preach the truth of Jesus Christ in the whole earth. And it comes out of hell. And he told me uh, about the abyss. He said there was demons and uh, evil powers down there so bad that if he was to release them, they would destroy the whole earth. That's how vicious they are. They're in chains and in jail cells. And they scream and growl and curse and do blaspheme things. And we have to think about this. A place called Outer Darkness. Uh, I could hear demons converse, and Jesus let me hear it, okay? He said that he wanted me to understand how we're attacked by demon powers. He said that, um, I want you to listen to what they're saying. There was groups of demons conversing and talking. And say you have an aunt, okay, say, that lives in Georgia. And she's saved and full of the Holy Spirit, loves God and goes to church. And the blood covenant keeps her, her family, her loved ones, okay? But say she has a niece in New York City that is in the street, she's on drugs, and the aunt's always praying for her. So these demons will send attacks to this child that, that she don't understand about the blood, she don't understand about the covenant, and cause her great grief. Or they will go to a, a church where the power of God is moving, there's young people come in that mock the Lord, and they will speak to them sitting in the churches, and they will cause great commotion, even on the, outside the church. They do this to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord told me. He said, where he has a band of angels that fight for the truth, there's groups of demons that go up to stop the gospel and from people believing. Like, for instance, they were talking about going to this person uh, that didn't have any faith, didn't believe in, caused chaos, you know, like... Uh, fires or, or all kind of stuff and what saves us from that is loving the Lord having faith in God and believing it I'm just telling you some of the strategies that they use uh, even in one of the wars that broke out I mean it's coming to me one many years ago uh, there was angels actually appeared to these men the leaders about the war and told them not to have that war angels came and told them and they still had the war so we don't know you know we don't know and but we have to trust the Lord is the main thing and faith in God and be born again but even when you're saved we get attacks it's a battle we call it okay but how to protect ourselves from these things they must be born again okay must have Christ in their heart because they were always talking about going to a uh, relative that's far away that don't even know about Jesus, you know, and things like that. I did hear that. Yeah, and that's why it's important for us Christians to pray for our relatives, our bloodline, our generations. 
Now, when I was down there, I saw a vat of fire, huge vat of fire with liquid boiling hot lava and God's eternal judgment. And I saw demons laughing and dragging souls over. It just died from, from the earth that it was called the abominables. And they're thrown in this liquid fire. To burn forever and ever and ever. The people really need to know this. They need to know that there is no coming out of that place. And they need to know that on the day of judgment in the book of Revelations, God shall speak and death and hell shall come up in the universe. They don't go into heaven. That's in Revelations chapter 20. And there, when the books of life are open, those people in hell, their books was never washed in the blood of the Lamb. And that's what it's all about. We have a book of our life in heaven that right now, if you're not born again and you're not saved, what happens? They keep recording your bad deeds. You just know that. But when you get born again on the earth and that blood washes you clean, that record's taken to heaven by angels. And then it's recorded in, in your book. But all these old things here, angels blot out all your sins and all your old transgressions. It's a Bible. It said, I even, he, I, even I am he that blotteth out all your old transgressions. And then these pages become crimson red. And then they take your book and they record in your book. The minute you got saved, the sermon you heard, they record everything that God did. And they close the book up and they take this before the, book of the throne of God. An angel of the Lord came by my bed. It had rainbow wings about 12 foot high and it had a white garment on. And over to the, the left of this angel, kind of behind him, stood Jesus. And he was on the right of Jesus. And uh, Jesus smiled at me. And the angel just spoke this and said, come and see the glory of God. And immediately I was out of my room. And I was standing outside the gates of heaven. Jesus wasn't there, but the angel was. The gates were a mile high and made out of uh, some kind of it looked like raw iron, iron, but it wasn't. It was pearl designed, you know, and it, and it was one pearl, but all kind of lights came from the gates. And two angels was on each side of the gates, and they were tall, and they had gold hair that was turned under on the bottom. And they were the keeper of the gates, okay? So the big angel that was with me walked over, and he talked to them. And they, one of them went inside the gate, and they brought out a book of my life and it had my name on it. Mary Catherine Baxter had it on the front and the back side. And there, uh, the angel opened up my book and he read something and he said, she can come into the city. So uh, I went into the city with this angel with the beautiful wings, you know. And we come into a grassy area, it's grass everywhere. Oh my Lord. And the grass looked like I had diamonds in it, you know. And then there was flowers. Oh man, there was flowers over to my right. Big clumps of flowers that would open up their petals and sing music to you. And then over to my left, there was a f five men with white garments on standing around a pedestal. And then I looked back over here, up on the hillside was many trees many many fruits on these trees and i noticed there were families lots of families of every nationality were standing around talking some on the grass that were sitting sitting at picnic tables and they had little children too and they were picking the fruit and eating it but no juice come on their hand and i'm looking at all of this and i'm